Placebo live on Four Music and, and Brian joins me now. In fear of turning it into an interview about fashion, that's a rather dashing jacket. Thank you, thank you. It's, it's my favourite. I absolutely love it. A bit of distressed leather never goes amiss. Yeah. Now you're you're known in many quarters as being an awkward interview. Is it that, or, or do you not suffer fools gladly? No, I think I basically did a lot of interviews very hungover. You know, in the early days. So I mean, anybody's awkward in that state. You know, I've kind of uh, I've learned a bit since then. So. Uh, because I want you then uh, as the first single, um, it hints at a, a, a very honest, mature, placebo lyricism in this album. Mm. L less convoluted subjects, less abrasive subjects, and very kind of uh, intimate. Well, yeah, I mean, when it, I went into the studio to write these lyrics, I, I was having a bit of writer's block and I was having a real hard time because I w really wanted to go through a process of change. I, I looked back on what I'd done before and I found it really gimmicky. And so I, I, I just wanted to leave the medicine cabinet behind, you know, and use everyday words and words that everybody could understand, but still communicate something that's, you know, hopefully deep. You say gimmicky, but placebo, their strength early on was that it wasn't gimmicky. The subjects were, were risky, but you always felt that it was a very natural thing for you to be singing about. We were just fighting against what we'd become famous for, I suppose. Uh, but now I think we've, we feel really comfortable about you know, what we represent and, and, and who the band is and just very, very at ease with ourselves. I think, you know, I, with a band we try to be so many things at once and on, on, this, on this record we just kind of decided to just, just be a rock band again. Um, you, you always draw such admiration from, from massive artists and, and the, on this album it sees you working with people who, again, you know, massive names who are admirers of Placebo. Michael Stipe this time? Michael Stipe's a hero of mine. I mean, he had such a huge influence on, on the development of my singing voice you know, as, as a teenager. When I discovered that I had a voice, it was very, very much about R.E.M. for me. And so just to actually get him, pin him down and get him into the studio, you know, was, was just a, a remarkable thing and another dream come true. I think Broken Promise, which is a song that Michael duets on, is, is very, very interesting because it's, it's a song about adultery and it's two men talking to each other. So, you know, it kind of takes it out of the realm of the cliché as far as an, a song about adultery is concerned, and there are thousands of them. And with Mike, we've kind of got the best of the old school, but then with Meds as well, we've got the best of the new school in, in, with Alison Mosshart, a.k.a. Vivi from The Kills, one of my favourite rock bands, you know. Oh, OK. If you ask Vivi from The Kills to play on the album, she's mm. going to be honoured. Let's face it, she'll get the boss to come and record in Placebo's album. How do you ask Michael Stipe to record in your album? He, it's not Michael Stipe at Yahoo.com well, or whatever. It started off with a, it started off with a, uh, a text message, you know, Brilliant. which then was followed up with an email. And uh, then just, you know, backwards and forwards from there, you know, modern technology. What is his email address? Is it like Michael Stipe at Hotmail.com or something? No, it's not. Okay. No. Because no. exactly. I would imagine what would happen is your, your fans would get that email first and then he would be more like Michael Stipe 1258. Michael Stripe. So, yeah, Michael Stripe, Michael Stripe. Stripe. slightly, yeah. yes, or something like that. Um, I mean, it comes from a long list of people. You played on stage with David Bowie. Um, that must be remarkable. So many comparisons between yourselves and, and Bowie's music. That must be something that just must blow you away even today. Well, uh, yeah, particularly when you're like a 22-year-old musician who hasn't even signed a record deal, and then all of a sudden you find yourself going from small clubs in Camden to uh, a 8,000 seater place in Italy, you know, and then you meet David Bowie. It's just like, it, it's, it's completely surreal and you haven't even recorded your first album yet. And he knows um, you. Yeah, somehow, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it, it's, it's very weird, but you know, it's kind of, there's always a voice in your head, you know, which tells you that you're, you know, you're, sh you're, you're pretty dodgy, you know. You're going to get found out. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, that somebody's going to figure it out. But when, when things like that happen, um, the voice is quieted for a little while.